Welcome to Beyond Common Sense. This episode is called My Living Legacy. And I called it that because this past week I had the wonderful opportunity of spending the entire week with at least two of our three children and their families. We had beautiful, beautiful weather. We were staying at a beautiful place. The food was great, but that's not what made it so wonderful. It was the people that were there, my family. And as I gathered with them, as we gathered together, and I'm sitting here thinking back on all the wonderful times we had, some of the most precious moments were in the evening when we would put the children to bed. And we would gather, and either Grandma or Grandpa would read the Bible story, and the children would sing, and we'd sing with them, and oh, and then pray. And I think, wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful living legacy you have given me. Now, we can all have a legacy. Um, there's nothing special about Tom and Wanda McAvoy. Nothing nothing special. This week we will have an anniversary and we will celebrate 39 years of marriage. And we began life making a point to seek God. And as we grew in the Lord and as we studied his word and sat under good, strong preaching, wow, God did a work in our hearts. But it's not Tom and Wanda McAvoy. (laughs) It's God. It is all about God. And I'm mentioning that to say it's open and it's free for everyone. What is your legacy? Do you have a living legacy with your children? My heart is burdened for moms and parents of young children. It's uh, never easy raising young children. (laughs) It's a trial. And as I watch Our kids, raising their kids, my oldest grandchild is turning nine this next week. And I watch them struggle. I see the hard work it is. And uh, I know I'm going to sound old, (laughs) but I think everybody will say at one time or another, oh, I'm glad I'm not raising kids today. I remember my mom saying that. Um, And it's true. There's difficulties in every generation there are difficulties. But God is faithful. He is never changing. He is all powerful. He is not taken by surprise by anything that is happening in this world today. He's planned it all. And that gives me such a sense of peace. And uh, so anyway, I was thinking about this uh, episode and what did I want to say? And so I went to my Bible searching. Lord, what is it? What can I share today that will be an encouragement to those who are looking for some help? Because I sit here, not at the very end of my life, but certainly at the end of my parenting days, although, folks, we never stop parenting. And what a blessing to get with older children who are now parenting and be able to sharpen one another. They sharpen me, and I sharpen them, we, my husband and I working together to encourage and strengthen one another. And also rebuking happens there as well, gently, but it does happen and they want to hear it. What a joy to have children who are still seeking help in their walk, in their their parenting. And so the verse that came to my mind was Psalm 37. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Of course, that has been a beacon of hope in my life, um, knowing that he will give me the desires of my heart. I desire that my children be godly. I desire that my grandchildren will be godly. That's the legacy that I want. But there's a qualifier, (laughs) and it does say, delight yourself also in the Lord. That comes before the promise. Am I delighting in God? And then if you back up a little further, verse 3 starts out, trust in the Lord. Am I trusting God to keep his word? He makes so many promises. 
in his word? Am I trusting him? Ah, the second half of that statement is trust in the Lord and do good. Am I doing good? Am I trying to be faithful? Am I trying to make right choices? Psalm 37, 3 goes on to say, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. We are where we are. We're living where we are. I don't know where you are living, but I would say most of you listening are in America. We're in sad times, but we need to dwell here. We don't need to be foolish. We don't need to be worried. We don't need to be in the midst of all the turmoil, unless we can be of some help, and feed on his faithfulness. That's where I'm going to get my strength, by feeding on his faithfulness. Psalm 37, 5, commit your way to the Lord. Every step of the day, I am trying to commit it to God. Trust, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. But there are other verses. I was looking at verses with the word heart and give in them because I was looking for Proverbs twenty three twenty six. My son, give me your heart. Um, that is so important. Do you have your children's hearts? How are you treating them? Do you have a relationship that they can share their heart with you? That's what Proverbs 23, 26 is saying. My son, give me your heart. Ah, but here we go. Second half of the verse. And let your eyes observe my ways. As I look back, I think that one of the best things we ever did with our kids in our parenting was to live Christ before them. Were we perfect parents? <laughs> no, not at all. We made so many mistakes, but we were transparent with them, and we tried to put on Christ. I was reading that earlier in my devotions. Put on Christ. If we put Christ on, just the same that we would put clothes on, I'm putting Christ on me, so that is what is seen in me and in my actions, in my words, in my goings, then it'll be a good thing. Then my son will gladly give me his heart. And of course, my daughter as well. They will give their hearts when they observe our ways and our ways are Christ-like. They won't be afraid to share their hearts. I did take a moment and try to find the word legacy in the Bible. I only found it in the New King James in Proverbs 3, 35, which says, The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Shame. Oh, how sad to have shame be our legacy. We can avoid that trap by having wisdom and walking with God. Of course, it starts with Psalm 5110, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew my spirit within me. The heart is created clean by salvation. It is renewed by the word of God, spending time with it. Psalm 57, 7, my heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. A heart that is steadfast. It is sitting solidly on the rock. That's a steadfast heart. And out of a steadfast heart comes praise. I will sing and give praise. Psalm 119, 34. Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. I hope my message is getting across. Your walk with God is what will affect your children the most. When they see you praising God for his goodness, when they see you crying out to God because you need help, when they see you asking forgiveness of them and of God, basically, you're being transparent. 
you're not trying to be perfect. You're just being open and honest with them about your walk with God. And you are continually growing. You know, Luke 6, 38 gives us a wonderful, precious promise. Listen to this. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I love that. You know, the blessings of this week are the fruit of years of giving to my children. Giving them what? Giving them the word of God. And you know, as long as I live, I will be trying to do that. I will be trying to live the testimony before them and continue to give to that living legacy, continuing to grow that living legacy. And what is really fascinating is Hebrews 11.4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. When I think of my grandmother and her heart and others that have gone on before us, what a joy to know that my testimony will continue on to my children and to their children and to children I will never even meet because I have planted the seeds of righteousness into my children's hearts and into my grandchildren's hearts. And they'll pass it on. Oh, a living legacy. What a great blessing it is. So, go out there today. Make some right choices. Fix the wrong ones. Focus on God. And you will have not only a good, but a godly day. Thanks for listening.